Hi, everyone. Starting with this video, we're going to look at D3. So D3 is a very popular way of creating data visualization for the web. And you may want to learn D3 is because this allows you to deliver your visualization across a wide range of platforms and reaching wide ranges of audience. So materials from this video is based on Dr. Chad Stoper, who is now an assistant professor at Southwestern University. Uh, so Chad was like a co advisee of uh, myself and also uh, Professor John Stasco. So in Chad's work, uh, these materials is actually what I would consider the crash course um, of D3 and or early sticking points, or only the beginning. Actually, there's a lot to learn about D3. So you've probably already seen a lot of the uh, D3-based visualization on the web. For example, here is a screenshot from uh, Bloomberg, which is a very in interactive uh, storytelling kind of infographics that show you um, how the car uses in America look like over time. So this is uh, something that you can scroll through. Uh, there's a lot of animation and tell the whole story. Um, and it's a combination of many charts. And you have probably seen a lot of examples like this. And a lot of them are created based on D3. So why would you want to learn D3, and when would you want to use it? So we recommend that you use Learn D3 if uh, your visualization, your system, or your tool will actually benefit from interactivity, as in how when the user interact with your chart, they may be able to get more information out of it or to explore the data better. So on the other hand, if you want to create static charts, then you should probably use just anything you want, like using Tableau, Excel, Python, uh, ggplot, and so on. And there's actually a lot more discussion about this. So this is a common question. People will say, ah, so I hear about this D3 thing. Uh, should I really learn about it? So this is what it says here uh, on Hacker News. So it's saying that D3 is good if your visualization benefits from interactivity. And uh, D3 may not be appropriate if all you want is a more basic, more static charts. Uh, the main reason is because D3 uh, has a very steep learning curve. So it's actually consisting of uh, many parts. You need to learn JavaScript. You need to learn some HTML, uh, CSS, and so on. And this video is about D3 version 3. Uh, Version 3 is actually not the latest version. Version 4 uh, came out not too long ago. And this is the latest. And however, it has uh, what we call bricking changes. So that means code I've written in version 4 actually not backward compatible to uh, version 3. And the reason we are staying with version 3 for now is because most D3 examples and tutorials that you see on the web are still using version 3. So for that reason, uh, to help you better learn and be able to learn from these examples and tutorials, that's why we stay with version 3. And there's an excellent article uh, that compares version 4 and 3, so basically telling you what are the major changes. And even better, there's another web link here that shows you if you want to upgrade your code from version 3 to version 4, what you want to do. In this video, we look at a quick overview of D3. And we said that it's a great choice uh, for web-based graphics if uh, you can benefit from the inter interactivity. But on the other hand, if you want to create more uh, basic charts uh, or static charts, then D3 may be overkill. 